Okay, so now we're going to remove the factory rear sight and front sight from this SP01 shutter, CZ75, and we're going to replace with a front sight from Emantec and a rear adjustable sight from Emantec. Okay. We're also going to be demoing our new slide lock tool, which is a great product for holding the slide in a vise while we work on let's it. Check. So that's going to be great. So let's take the spiral apart and start to remove the old sights. So we've got it down to its basics and we're going to get our slide lock tool. These are made specifically for Shadow 1, Shadow 2 and for most of the other firearms as well. And they're specifically cut to fit the slides just like that. And you can mount it in a vise without damaging the slide and without it moving around. So we're going to be working on the rear side first. So we're going to put that right there and nothing moves once it's locked in place. Really, really nice. So we're going to use a 1.5 millimeter Allen key to loosen those grub screws. I want to take them a fair way out so we don't have them dragging on the slide. There we go. And which way are we going to drift this out? We'll go this way. So when you're locating your punch on a rear sight to drift it, you want to line it up with the groove. You don't want to be hitting it here and talking the sight. You want to be hitting it right there where the groove is, where the dovetail groove is. I'm going to work from this side. Yep, we're moving. It's a really old sight. It's been in there a long time. There we go. We'll clean that up a little bit before we install the front, the rear sight from Emantec. Let's move this along. Do the front sight. And for the front sight, we're using a two millimeter punch and we have to remove the roll pin that holds the front sight in and the barrel bushing. So let's locate that. There's our pin. And to remove the front sight, we don't want to damage it. We're using a plastic rod. There we go. The old original front sight removed. Now we're just going to clean up these holes for the front sight and rear sight and then we're going to install the new ones. So now we're just going to clean up the old slots where there was some Loctite from the factory. We're going to use a wire brush just to get rid of anything in those grooves so we can get our new sight in easily. Make sure that is clean. Yep, pretty good. We're going to have to drill that just now and in the rear notch we're just going to clean that out just slightly and our brush now that's ready to install the new sights and while we're here with the front mounted in our vice lock or grip tool we're going to do the front sight now in the set comes the front sight with two fiber rods and a brand new roll pin, which we recommend you use every time you replace the front sight. Now, as we've stated before, the Emantec front sight comes with a pre-drilled groove for the roll pin, but you still have to drill this. This is just a guide and it's slightly drilled. So to install it, we line it up and we want to make sure we go in straight. That's lined up pretty good. We don't want to damage the site, so we're using our plastic rod. And we're gently going to send it home, making sure it stays down. Always take your time and make sure it's going in straight and not skew. That's almost there. And that's bottomed out against the rear. 
perfect. So this is the drill bit we use to drill the hole for the front sight. And it's a two millimeter cobalt high-speed steel drill bit that we also sell. Um, and you can find this on our website. Now to drill the hole, you wanna drill in the direction that the rotation of the drill bit pulls the sight into the rear of the slide. If we drill it from this side and our drill's rotating that way, it's going to pull the sight outwards and there's gonna be a gap. So we want it pulled in towards the rear sight and we're gonna drill it from this side because our rotation is going clockwise. My suggestion is to center the drill, make sure you square vertically and horizontally, get the speed up and go through in one clean go. Done. That's all we need to do. Clean out the hole, get our roll pin that comes in the kit with the front sight. Get it started. And then send it home with your punch. Almost there. That's it. Front sight installed. And having that pilot hole drilled through the front sight from the factory allows us to line up the drill bit when we drill it. And as you saw the amount of material that came out of there, it was quite easy to do. Okay, that front sight is in nice and neat, no issues. We're now gonna install the fiber rod. Because we've got a recessed hole in the front that allows us to pull the bulge through, we just bulge this very, very slightly. I just give it a touch, maybe a little bit more, because I don't like it very, very bold. Now that will recess nicely into the front sight. And as you'll see now, unlike other front sights, it actually pulls into the body of the sight and stops in the recess. So you can have quite a small micro dot for accuracy. And then the last little bit, we'll just clip that off. And we'll keep some pressure on it from this side and just melt. And there we go, front sight fiber rod installed. Let's move on to the rear sight. Let's recenter that vice lock tool. That's in nice and tight. And we need our adjustable rear sight from Emantec. This is adjustable for elevation and windage. A beautiful sight. We're just going to prepare this by removing the screw in the top which is the adjustment because underneath there there's a grub screw that locks the sight in once it's in position so we have to just remove that. So let's remove that adjustment screw. Pressing down on the sight takes the spring tension off it. If you don't it'll do the click click. There we go we can just unscrew it and Put that screw there. Inside here you will find two springs that maintain pressure on the site when it's been adjusted and the grub screw which is also 1.5 millimeter. We're going to take that out completely. There we go. Now we're good to install this. I like to put the screw back in so it's not flopping around on the hinge. When I find my screwdriver, there we go. Now, now we've prepared the slot for the rear sight. We're going to add just a little bit of red Loctite. Just a tiny amount on that surface where we're going to be installing the sight from because that'll spread further down. Okay. Let's start that guy going in. So again, like the front sight, line it up as best you can and always check to see it's going on straight. And we will start to drift it with the plastic, which won't be hard enough, but we just get it going. Can you see there? Yep, that's going. Make sure it's straight.
Now that we have the rear sight installed where we want it, we can remove that screw. Install our grab screw, which is a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And this just needs to be torqued down. A little bit more. That's it. We reinstall our springs. Close up our rear sight. Make sure we've got spring tension there. And by holding that down, we can screw that screw in without activating the ratchet. And we're ready to zero it on the range. That looks really, really good. Time to reassemble this firearm. We've got the sights on. Our tool has been very, very effective. Wow, those sights look awesome. Very nicely defined. Do we need to adjust it in the shooting range? Yes. Although we've centered the rear sight very, very accurately, depending on our load, we're definitely going to have to adjust for elevation because we've guessed, and that'll just be using the elevation screw, and we might need to adjust for windage using the windage screw. But being a fully adjustable rear sight, this is very easy to do. We don't have to drift it with a punch. We can just use our screwdriver and adjust what we need. Mm -hmm.